Uh, so I, I'm very excited and I'm sure you're very excited because your company is growing really fast right now. Yeah, uh, I, I'd say that uh, the uh, uh, topic for this uh, meeting should be the, the naked and, and my my part in that uh, uh, company. Um, so so I, I can uh, start off with uh, explaining a little how I got into contact with the company because it's it's really a peculiar and, and quite uh, yeah please do uh, old company. So so my um, uh, I have uh, run into Jarno, which is the founder of Naked, sometimes previously, uh, since I have a background in e-commerce here in Sweden uh, for the last 10 years. Uh, and, and he has started a lot of uh, very successful e-commerce companies, uh, one being Nelly.com, which started, I think, 2005 and, and grew for uh, at least, I think, eight years. Uh, so it was a, a quite fast grow. And then uh, he, he sold that and started some company within, uh, I think, uh, Pet Foods Online or something, which also, also was quite successful. But, but mm-hmm. the, uh, the, the, the t- attempt here in Naked was, the I think, uh, really peculiar one and really fast growing. So uh, they started in 2015. And uh, I, I have heard about Jarno previously. So my first contact with Naked was uh, in... Uh, spring 2017 about a year ago so i, I mm-hmm. got a call from uh, uh, the new cfo in the company and he explained that they had a challenge for me uh, being one of my uh, motive operandi so, so to speak uh, in e-commerce was the uh, migration of platform or when you move right. from one platform to another and, and the risks and, and, and uh, processes in, in there so i've done that quite a lot of times so they have gotten word of me, and now they had a, a really uh, important uh, business project for, for, for Naked, which had then uh, outgrown their uh, current platform, uh, and also the business model for the company has changed, so, so it was really uh, important to, to change uh, the platform to a more suitable one, uh, and also to accommodate for the tremendous growth. So, so he actually sold this as a challenge in, in one of the, I think, uh, top 30 or 40 uh, fastest growing companies in Europe. And, and this was also in the fashion, in retail fashion industry, which I was then completely new to, uh, although I have been working in retail previously. And this was a small company out of some, some startup, uh, uh, more of a in, in industrial facility in, in uh, quite rural Gothenburg. Uh, Mm-hmm. But, but he was actually able to sell this since he explained that this it was a more of a, a business project than an IT project since the uh, project has, has also uh, that they were they were very afraid that it would fail because uh, they were I think uh, one third of the uh, time plan was already passed and they haven't actually uh, gotten any progress at all so. Um, I, I was curious, so I, I went to, to them and I uh, explained, uh, spoke with uh, the founder, Jarno, and, and, and the CFO and them, and they explained that this was probably the most uh, important project uh, in 2017 for the company, and it was mm-hmm. uh, a, a whole uh, uh, say migration of e-commerce and, and also a PIM system that they have included for the, the system architecture since uh, previously was a more uh, uh, simple uh, e-commerce platform based on PHP and Magento version. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, now I'm familiar with those. I, I really like it Magento as well, but for that, that purpose and what they had done with the Magento, it was quite uh, skewed. So so it. Uh, yeah, they usually do that, yeah. right? <laughs> so so it was it was probably in, in the last minute that we were able to change this. But the 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 key here being since I realized that that was probably a twelve month project to do, uh, the project plan was in uh, six months only. So it was quite quite uh, a steep curve. And uh, when I got the board. I think uh, almost two, two months has already elapsed. Uh, and uh, for, for me to be able to deliver on this, uh, which was, uh, I think the, the predecessors had done quite a sloppy job in, in the, the whole anal- analysis and, and the demands. So it was uh, a really uh, impossible project. 
But uh, one of the first things that I did was to accept the, the role as uh, the CTO and, and project manager of this was to have the, the staff, the developers, uh, to elect me as, as their uh, manager, not, not to be appointed by the CFO or CEO. Yeah, you have to get the buy-in from the team. Exactly. So, so this was one of the, the kickers for me to, to have the, the group's approval as, as their manager or leader. And how did you do that? Uh, I, I worked close with them for a couple of weeks. And what we did was uh, uh, firstly to remove the influence of the CEO, the founder, and, and the CFO from the, the, part, uh, the, the developers to actually create some uh, stable work environment. To say that you, we can we, you can have meetings <laughs> with me, but you should not uh, interfere with the, with the developers because they need to have some kind of uh, peace and quiet. That that was I think one of the issues to actually be a filter for the developers or, or the upper management to to, to be able to uh, re- remove some of the, the really ludicrous uh, requests and, and and to be to some kind of sane sanity filter. And then, then to create create the uh, environment of uh, peace and quiet, and then we worked uh, close for a couple of weeks, and, and then we had the discussion, or, or the, the CEO had a discussion of uh, having me appointed as a new CTO, which they uh, approved. So then, then they have the uh, since they have selected me as, as their leader, uh, I think then we can also uh, step things up. So we had quite. Uh, steep uh, plan where the uh, project was uh, remodeled uh, had some scope reductions of things that were really not MVP so because the uh, important thing with this project is we had a very very hard firm set deadline uh, in November so that we were able to adjust the scope of the project and to adjust the budget somewhere somewhat but the uh, deadline was quite firm set and I will come to why that was important later on um so uh we, we had some uh, uh tough months i like you made a good point you made a good point because rather than saying oh we're gonna hire 20 more people so we can meet the deadline instead you just adjusted the scope right yeah that's what yeah, you do exactly and yeah. and uh you you have it's, it's of course a balance because you cannot hollow out everything or, or take too much shortcuts so you have to have some kind of baseline on what to deliver uh, but the thing is that uh, uh, the, the CEO, uh, the founder, had some unrealistic uh, uh, expectations of this. And the, the key is that uh, the uh, uh, old platform would never have stood, stood for so, some close scrutiny because it was really, uh, I, I jokingly can talk about it now as an amusement park because uh, the, the uh, operations went up and down and we had some severe uh, shortages and, and uh, major incidents. So I think it was uh, probably, it, it was running and we sold quite good, but we would never have uh, uh, been able to uh, continue the, the growth we have now. So so we, we were at peak and we, we were really having issues maintaining that old platform. Um, right. and, and also we, we were, of course, uh, we had a new round of investors uh, uh, the fall in 2017, and one of the key things that we would never have uh, gone through any tech uh, DD or due diligence with the old platform because they would have, uh, uh, of course, realized that they, it was not sustainable for the new uh, sales. So, so, so for um, us to be uh, fi- successful in the new financing, we had this fall it was uh, uh, critical to have the new platform up and, and running. So uh, uh, what, what we did also, we, we of course had, uh, uh, we have fun. Uh, so, so we have some uh, three o'clock beer where we, we can take a beer at work uh, Friday nice. afternoon. And we have some quiz. Um, so we had, we had a lot of, uh, we worked hard and we had to increase the pace as well. So we did some uh, quite, quite tough weeks at the end of this project. But what is also uh, interesting in this company is that most of the staff are quite young. So out of 150 employees, about, uh, let's say, 80% are below 27 years of age. So it's quite young staff and and, uh, highly motivated and and, uh, still into the startup uh, kind of vibe. So when we did some acceptance testing in, in uh, November, we had a weekend where uh, 25 uh, staff members from uh, non-IT departments like marketing and uh, purchasing 
came and did uh, a weekend with us to do exception testing with uh, so, so it was kind of all company involvement which is also quite nice to have Thanks. So. Yeah, when you bring all the departments together and everyone feels that sense of culture. Does the culture in your development team match the culture and other parts of the company? Uh, I, I'd say that prior to these changes we did, and uh, uh, because it's also what really uh, drew me to this company and to this project and to this role was that uh, I think no one actually believed that we could pull this off because the IT department had uh, report, reputation of uh, uh, having everything 80% completed 80% of the time. So they really never finished anything and delivered on, on things. So we were always late. And the first uh, the first platform they started in uh, 2015, uh, starting the company was, I think, six months delayed. Uh, so, so, so what we did here that we actually delivered on time changed everything. So, so going from being... Uh, uh, like uh, all, almost some kind of internal joke uh, for, for development and IT department, we, we actually uh, gained a lot, lot, lot of notoriety in this project. And with what we set with the new platform uh, was actually what uh, uh, catapulted us into 2018 because we also in late 2017 received uh, funding from a French company which invested $40 billion in us. So we are now building Naked 2.0. Nice. So, and that would never have been possible without the new platform, I'd say. So, so just so I recap, so you come in here, you've got a department that's getting 80% of the stuff done 80% of the time. So they're not producing much value at all to the organization, just a lot of incomplete projects. They accept you as their leader through you working with them for a handful a week, maybe two weeks, very closely, and then they vote you in as their leader. You then shift the culture so that the rest of the company's culture matches the technology, or so that you, you pull the rest of the company's culture into technology so that they're in sync. And then from there, what you do is you build an actual useful product that brings value to the rest of the organization, which then gives your department or the technology department like notoriety and respect from the rest of the company because they're, they're actually bringing value and helping them with what they're trying to do. Yeah, ex exactly. And, and the thing here is what that um, when uh, when I first got approached by this, I, I'd say that uh, there was probably one person in the entire company uh, or and in the entire project that believed that this could be done uh, besides me. Uh, and then it was also a matter of convincing uh, because both both the, the CEO and the IT department uh, themselves uh, were in serious doubt about this being done at all. So it was also a matter of uh, bit by bit building up the confidence and, and trying to show that this can actually be done and be, being the stubborn person who actually uh, came to office first and left uh, last and, and to show that uh, it's just a matter of, uh, it's like to say, how do you devour an elephant? Yeah, yes, you, you di divide it and take it bit by bit mm -hmm. to, to be able to, to create something bigger. Um, and also what also complicated, because we had a, a supplier which was uh, uh, like a premium partner for this e-commerce platform. And uh, they started the project, the six-month project that really should have taken 12 months. Uh, they started this with taking uh, six months of vacation, all of them. So, so, so they actually also uh, was a kind of a big uh, stress factor for the company that, that they were not, uh, uh, they were procrastinating a lot. So I see that they also yeah. didn't believe that this could be done. Uh, and therefore, they put, didn't put any effort in. So, so I say it was uh, a lot of politics and, and, and uh, PR in, in having this done. Wow. And so, when when the the French company came in and put money in, was that because everyone saw the transition and saw how fluid and everything was going well? Is that what brought in that investor? Uh, yes. Yes, I'd say that. Uh, uh, the, the new platform and the IT was probably one third or 50% or of this. And so it was also, uh, since we are a product company uh, in fashion, it's, uh, it has to do with the, with the designers and the purchasing and the, the brand. So the naked brand is actually very high valued. And if you search for, uh, do statistics from Google and see the other, like H&M and, and Zalando and other Swedish brands, the naked brand will rate higher in, in uh, Google searches because the, uh, uh, brand awareness of our customers, which would be uh, women between 18 and 35, we have extremely high brand awareness. 
So, so I say it's uh, the uh, IT platform is a means to deliver on that brand. Uh, so, so without that, we would not have gotten the funding, definitely. Uh, and then I also want to stress what, what we did in uh, IT department with the developers was that we set some core values uh, aligning to, to the failure to deliver previously on, on that everything was uh, almost 80% down all of the time, uh, which partly was, of course, because uh, uh, the, the upper management were constantly involved in uh, replanning things for IT. And uh, we uh, we claimed that we work in some agile Scrum methodology, but it was mostly like one continuous ever-growing sprint that never was completed because uh, they, they never uh, was able to uh, keep like uh, sprint planning and, and doing a proper, proper framework. So we took... Uh, uh, we brought out three core values, which the, the staff themselves brought out, and one was transparency. Like we should always be transparent within the company of what we are working with and, and our roadmap and what is to be delivered on later. Because now that we have set the uh, uh, the pace and we have shown that we can deliver, they will actually uh, not push things because they know it's in the roadmap. So they know that they, it will be built eventually. Uh, number two was integrity, that we when we promise something, we always deliver on it. So we should not make promises that we cannot deliver on. And we should make uh, to the fullest extent to try to to uh, deliver on promises that have been made. And the third being solidarity, so we, we work as a team and we help each other out. And th- those core words, I think, also contributed in, in bringing the team together and, and uh, to making us much better on, on delivering on, on promises. I agree. I mean, those things that you've established, those core values, are not just nice to have, they're prerequisites to you hitting the goal and to being able to pull everyone together. Definitely, definitely. And, and um, the, the thing is that now now we are at more of a, it, it has been a tough transition because it means that I, I have to take a lot of fights with the CEO and other upper management to be able to get this uh, leeway or, or, or like uh, uh, the, the uh, how should I put it? Uh, they, they, they believe in, uh, enough in, in us uh, as a department that we will work uh, in the sprints and, and with the roadmaps so they would not interfere or micro, try to manage, micromanage us. Uh, but now we have that. Well, I, uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. So I'm really interested in the core values for a second. So when you, you talk about them, right, I can see how a you know you would address the team and you would talk about them and establish them. But how, how would you bring them up in a day-to-day life to sort of like establish the culture? Like how, how would you continuously bring them up? I mean, did you print them out and stick them up on the wall? Did you constantly bring them up in conversation? How did you keep those three core values in front of you and not just an exercise that you did and make it something that you actually lived? Uh, I, I'd say that part of this was the first uh, exercise where we actually uh, brought forth the core values that we should have in IT because I think that you should have some core values and they should be uh, created as a, as a group effort that you, you together will, with the, with the staff will, will uh, establish. Uh, and secondly, we of course, uh, we had them written down and we talked a lot about what the meaning was of those words. Uh, and uh, I'd say that the most important is that, that you actually uh, uh, live like you learn or, or so to speak that you, uh, when you spoke, speak about transparency, uh, you will also have to live by it and, and show it to others. And, and uh, I had a discussion about uh, one of my uh, latest uh, star employees, uh, a very senior developer, had gotten promised something from our CEO, uh, something uh, regarding his employment. Uh, I wasn't part of that discussion, and I, I don't think our CEO remembers it. But it's very important for me as their leader to actually deliver on what we as a company has promised. Uh, the integrity core value. So it, I say that you have to actually uh, be, set an example and, and actually show this for, for the staff as well. Uh, like the lead by so it's example. up to you to lead them. Definitely. Yeah. So, so and then when when there was like a violation, do you just did you just address that like independently one on one with the individual? Uh, always. Uh, I, I say that uh, I have had. Uh, staff uh, like a man- man- manager role for about 10 years and I have never 
uh, taking a, a resignation from any staff. I have unfortunately been a, uh, forced to terminate some employment, but I, I've never had an employee resign on me. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, and I, I know it has uh, always been like a very very fast growing uh, business, which is an uh, uh, issue of itself, and or or a very fast decline, which is also very hard. Uh, so it's always been uh, companies that that has been very fast shifting. Um, but I say it's it's uh, uh, there. There is a, I think it's an American um, that uh, speaks a lot about leadership called Simon Sinek. Uh, I love Simon. Yeah, yeah. and, and he, I think he has a lot of this figured out that like why you you have to start with the why etc. And, and always the why why does uh, leaders it lost is also one example of. I think you have to 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 be uh, to be a part of it, but also to be to, to be standing on the sideline and just uh, allow your staff to to grow. Yes. Yeah, so. That, that's really interesting. So you obviously have read Simon Sinek's book and what other things do you do? Like I, what I do, I'll tell you what I do. I just constantly read and listen to Audible and I'm always consuming different sort of leadership content and I keep it around me all the time so that it's, you know, in my focus because if you stop paying attention to a topic, it fades into the background. So do you do the same thing? Do you keep leadership material in front of you frequently, like Simon's and other other leaders? Yeah, and, and I try to, uh, because I think the uh, uh, Simon is one, but I think there is, there is like a paradigm shift in, in coming from an old uh, industrial uh, society where, where uh, you worked in the factory and you had a, a manager which was like hardcore appointed boss which set the rules uh, like an authority figure uh, into shifting into more more of the uh, what Simon talks about the the, the leader be, being a, more of an informal role that you don't necessarily have to be appointed to you, you can have a manager but you can also have a leader in the same department they are not necessarily the same person so I think the the uh, like in the, in the digital era where we are now the the role of the leader will be very much more important and, and the, perhaps the old manager type of figure will diminish some. So I think there's a lot of interesting like TED talks, etc., about the topics of the new the new type of management being, being centralized around the leader. Oh, I was talking to the C, CTO of TED this, uh, this weekend. He only lives an hour from me. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, he's a real, real cool guy. Um, his name is Gavin. But, you know, that, that's... You, you make some really good points about about leadership and I, I'm kind of curious to know like wh- where do you see your next stage in leadership like where where are you focusing on in growth in your role like what's on the top of your mind lately I, I, I say that it's uh, I, I'm, I'm very comfortable where I am right now because naked is it is a very um, both challenging but also extremely interesting company uh, because it's a never a dull moment and every day will give you new challenges, uh, which is good. <laughs> and uh, I think when we started in 2015, uh, late 2015, the, the, say the new site was up six months later, so uh, March 2016. Then we sold in, uh, we sold like, uh, was it uh, about $20 million the first year? And then it was $50 million last year, 2017. And we will uh, probably hit $100 million this year. Uh, and then that kind of growth produced exceptional challenges on everything, uh, staff, uh, facilities, uh, IT, of course. So, so I say that uh, uh, I am very happy with my current uh, position in, in this company. Uh, and uh, I am 43 years of old, uh, age now. And I'm probably not ever going to be like the strategic PowerPoint making plans <laughs> kind of leader. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, more comfortable with being uh, part, part of a smaller team. We are now 10 FTs in the IT department naked. Some uh, consultants, uh, so we are like 16, I think, total in the product. 
Uh, but I, I would always be the person who like to, to roll up the sleeves of the shirt and, and to dig into things and, and be, be part of it more than to standing in the board meetings with uh, the necktie and, and producing powers. Me too. So, <laughs> so how many people are on the development team total? I have, I have 10 FTs uh, now and, and we are, uh, uh, right now we are uh, 10 consultants uh, on, on uh, uh, working from remote. So, so we are 20 in total, but uh, 10 employees. Nice. And then how, how have you, uh, have you faced any challenges with, so you're in the growth and so you're, you're picking up some consultants because you'll probably need some specialists, right? Because we all have generalists and specialists that we need. But what have you noticed as far as the culture when making the team more remote? Like, what have you faced any challenges with involving the remote team back into the company culture, or what have you learned there? Uh, yes, I'd say when uh, when when I started here, uh, I had uh, I had some uh, almost like uh, uh, pretty uh, like uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, you, you have you have made up your mind previously about something to your preconception, your and I was. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. Exception. And then I was dead against the remote things. So I thought that if I have consultants, quite uh, expensive ones, I'd like to keep them in the team because uh, both to, to transfer knowledge, but also be able to uh, keep track on the hours. And, 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 you know, if someone is misbehaving, it's a good uh, chance to talk with them. Uh, and uh, uh, that has changed uh, uh, working here because now we have... Uh, uh, we have the daily standups via Hangouts, uh, so everyone is able to work from remote. Even the staff in Gothenburg are able to work from home if necessary. So we, we are quite dynamic, and we have uh, uh, 9 a.m. We have the daily standups for about 15 minutes, quite disciplined, and we have um, we have time logging in Jira. So, so it's uh, I think it's possible to work almost from everywhere. Uh, and I say, say it's uh, it's just a matter of setting the structure and and. and uh, uh, in today's work environment, I don't see any issues at all with having a distributed team. So, how do you so, how do you involve them in sort of like the human aspect? So, the time tracking, the deliverables, all that, I, I understand. But what do you do to intentionally kind of like involve them in the company aspect, or or are they at a distance? Yeah, I, I agree with you that it has been an issue of uh, uh, consultants being uh, remote. Uh, we had some uh, uh, like almost work exchange where some of the developers uh, from my team went down to the consultants, which are uh, they are about three hundred kilometers away, so it's uh, two two and a half hour. But by train, so it's not that that far. Uh, uh, but they they went there and they were on, on some. Uh, we had a couple's programming and they worked very tightly with the consultants for a couple of days. Uh, and we did that for, for a couple of months, which I think was also very successful. Nice. Uh, and then we have some, uh, we had have, have had some events where we went out, went out and have dinner and had some beers, et cetera, also. So it's, um, but it, it, yeah, I agree with you that it actually complicates the, the human part of it. The, the, the coffee machine talk, et cetera, will be less. So we use Slack for daily communication, but it's, it's not uh, comparable to actually human interaction, unfortunately. So, Right. There's actually a recurring topic that has been coming up on the show, and it's sort of like the work from home depression that you get because you're not going out into the world for large portions of the day. So that's something that is is new because we didn't have a lot of work from home, you know, 25 years ago, but we're getting a lot more of it now. So now we need new skills and techniques in order to, to not become, you know, too depressed and, and to be ordered to get that human interaction that we need. Cause we're built as people to interact with each other. And you, sometimes you just need to look into someone else's eyes or like have a conversation or a high five, you know, like the water cooler stuff you were talking about. Definitely. Definitely. So, so I'd say that, uh, we, um, we, we try to have, uh, and I also um, uh, substitute some of the consultants that, that were uh, in the team that were 300 kilometers away from some local ones in Gothenburg that are able to sit with the team in our office. Just because, uh, as you mentioned, there, there is the, the extra dimension of, of being present in, in, the, in the office. Oh, that's really smart. I, 
I'm taking notes over here <laughs> because because it's it's really cool how you do that. You you found consultants, yeah, because you understand remote is part of it, but you have intentionally sought out consultants that have the potential to be able to come into the office from time to time to to develop those relationships. Yeah, I'd say it's uh, uh, since since um, uh, and it's funny because we we are now doing uh, we have a very uh, uh, like a balanced work schedule, so we, we have the two sprints and we, we we deploy and release and it's uh, in the project that we did last uh, year was more caric and was quite uh, we did some sixty hours uh, work weeks as well, uh, and it's all, now it's balanced out. We do the normal forty hours week day. Week, uh, weeks, uh, and uh, it, uh, it's basically some of the developments that uh, mentioned that they missed the old times when we did the project where we did the late night pizza and beer and we worked very much like uh, the startup. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, what we have done is uh, we also try to involve the consultants in customer to be part of the. Uh, but it's of, of course it's a balance. You, you cannot push sixty hours weeks uh, for very long. So it's a it's a matter of. Uh, uh, prove, proving something, and, and then it's actually. Uh, but, I, but I say it's, uh, and it's, it's also always has uh, it has always been uh, voluntary. So so those who, are, who have family uh, etc. are of course uh, not required to work long hours. Right. Do you have any children? Yeah, I have two. I have a daughter of nine years and a son of one and a half. So it's uh, it, it's uh, it's an interesting. It's uh, that they. Uh, uh, they challenge my uh, my uh, uh, leadership skills uh, constantly. <laughs> so it's, uh... Isn't it like watching little machine learning algorithms gain experience? <laughs> yeah, definitely, and, and it's also uh, uh, what, what it, it puts uh, it puts time in a very peculiar perspective because my nine year old daughter, I remember being one year old quite recently, so, yeah. so it's uh, it's a very very very. Uh, uh, rewarding but also challenging experience yeah it's, it's also challenging for you to watch them grow so fast and see wow time is just speeding up <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. and then it, it, I, and then you have opportunities like this like you know obviously you're inside your life but from an outside you seem to be really in a in a great position as far as you're you feeling you doing something great it looks like to me these your whole 10 years led up to this this moment now right like like naked right because you've you've gone in there and you've leveraged a full decade of experience to execute come through and be responsible for bringing the platform that has allowed this growth yeah definitely and and, and um, i think that one uh, benefit from from being a senior is that you you should really learn uh, both about your your experience and, and, and your mistakes and what, what drives you and, and also what, what will deter you from uh, taking a, 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 an assignment or, or a challenge. Uh, and uh, what I've learned about myself is that uh, I it's like the um, roll up your sleeves uh, on the shirt and, and to get your hands dirty thing we talked about recently. Uh, that businesses are either in, in fast growth uh, or in fast decline is uh, something that I really enjoy working with because it's a quite uh, severe situation and also uh, high stakes and, and quite compli- complex uh, problems. Uh, but when you have actually stabilized uh, and you're going into more of a maintenance phase, I quite rapidly lose interest because it will be too much of a, a regular nine to five and uh, uh, quite uh, predictive. Uh, and here at Naked, I, I can tell you that, uh, uh, that there, there is no day like the, the, the yesterday. So, so there will always be a, uh, quite, quite fast uh, turns, but also um, uh, quite good challenges. Yeah, so I've, I've been thinking a lot about that too, because you know I talk to different CTOs of various size companies all the time. And... You know, I've been one myself for quite a while. So there, getting to know yourself is incredibly important. And I found that much like you, I crave that variety and the project. And then recently I've been playing, now I haven't 
tested this recently, but I've been playing with it, right? Is can I get that variety need solved through the culture and the relationships at the business and allow the business itself to continue to, to grow at its pace and maybe be a little boring in one sense someone may see that oh you just wake up and go there every day or oh you just continually do it like this and so from one perspective from someone who's outside the culture it could look boring but from being inside with the relationships and the challenges that we're choosing to seek out and solve it's actually quite not boring it's very exciting yeah i agree with you because that there might be and it's also uh, from from, from uh, naked, I say we are quite uh, lucky that most, uh, or, or it's a culture thing, that uh, most of the employees are the people who like the challenge or the variety. Uh, and if you were like um, uh, so someone who would prefer to work at the IRS or something to to crunch papers, <laughs> you, you would probably not right. get or you would not apply for a job there. So we have that in our DNA like driven by very, very fast change. And it's uh, also something that I think has led to this tremendous growth. So it's, it's not just an IT uh, success, but it's a, it's a success for the entire company, uh, which also makes uh, my role quite challenging because uh, th- there is a lot of request changes on IT and we don't have any physical stores. So the IT, uh, the e-commerce platform is our, um, we have some business to business as well, but uh, that's quite recent. So, so it has always been the e-commerce platform that is our, main sell channel uh, and there can be a lot of uh, uh, most of them are good but there are some ludicrous requests as well but uh, uh, it's a challenge <laughs> of, of being able to uh, to funnel it into some kind of uh, uh, sprint or roadmap or something and, and to, to explain to the business that you, you, you can have this but you cannot have it right now so we have to uh, prioritize so that's so, what you're learning at home though <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely definitely so, uh, yeah, this, this is this has been like a fantastic call. I've learned so much. You you've you've answered like a million questions. What other big topics are on your mind that you really want to get off, uh, get out into the world? Uh, I'd, I'd say that it's uh, it's of course important to to have fun, to to laugh at uh, at, at things, and, and uh, uh, sometimes I uh, in stand ups I, I do some. Uh, ludicrous joke or something just to light, light the tension up and it's uh, you, you should uh, you should remember to have fun because it's, it's not always uh, uh, the, the, the most uh, biggest challenges or, or, or uh, worst task that, that uh, it's all about so, so I'd, I'd say that uh, well, hey, you bring up a great point because as a leader one of your abilities has to be to feel the energy of the room and your team, to understand it, and then to be able to intentionally change it by bringing it up or down as you need, right? If it's way too high and everybody's way too excited all the time, nothing's getting done, right? There has to be that that ebb and flow of balance. And you as the leader are the one who gets to set the pulse. You get to set the tone, the rate at which you go up and down, and then you have to be always aware of it. I have found that Learning that is something I've only learned in the past two years, but once I figured it out, it's been incredibly beneficial to me to be able to, to pull together people. Definitely, definitely, and and also to be uh, almost like a step, take a step back and to uh, listen and observe because there are uh, people, developers are individuals, and and some would like uh, to have more more challenges, and some would like, some would like to have. Uh, the same level as previously so it's, it's important also to realize who uh, like we did in the in the uh, earlier project that uh, not everyone can do a 60 hour week or wants to and it's very important to, to accept that and, and to, to the ones who wants to have more challenges you can keep rising the bar uh, and uh, almost as a, a trainer for for uh, olympics that you can rise raise the bar and, and make them more productive or more uh, learn new, new technologies as well so as I see, it's, it's important to realize that uh, almost uh, all everyone in the team would be an individual as well as part of the team. Right, because the people that are hungry, it's your job to keep feeding them challenges. Definitely. And the people that want to do the more repeatable tasks or the tasks that are that are that are less challenging, provided 
you know, they're motivated and they get stuff done, but the ones that want to do the less challenging stuff, it's important to take that sort of work and then assign it to them and then allow the hungry people to keep solving and feeding them challenges. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, I'd say that uh, this is uh, my uh, analysis and it might be flawed, but I think more more senior developers with family, etc., tends to be more reluctant to, to extreme challenges and, and more junior, uh, new, new, fresh out of school. They, they, they're really hungry, like to learn and, and can dig into almost uh, everything, like uh, with ferocity. Uh, but it might, of, of course. Oh, I found this to be true. I found the same. So I think uh, we have a good mix. We have some uh, junior developers and some senior, and we, we have a, a good uh, culture and a good mix of that, so we can keep both uh, uh, both momentum and, and stability. I've also noticed that um, languages, programming languages, also have cultures of their own in the sense that certain types of people program in certain types of languages. Oh, okay. How, how uh, could, can you elaborate on that? Is it? Yeah, I've like in general some of the if you if you look at uh, Python versus Ruby for specifics, you'll find that if you start reading the code of Python developers, it'll be drier, and if you read the code of Ruby developers, it'll be more fun and creative and upbeat. Okay, I'll have to look into that. That sounds very very funny. Uh, definitely. Yeah, and if you look at the if you look at the creators of the two languages, they have the personality of their code bases. <laughs> yeah, I, I can totally understand that. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, check that out. That's just that I, that conversation came up the other day with um, another CTO, and and I was like, uh, yeah, I noticed that Python developers, uh, not all of them, first of all, it's not like a blanket statement, but I noticed if I run into 100 Python developers, you know, 60 of them are very similar to each other. And if I do the same with Ruby, it's the same thing. And and so I went and looked, he pointed out, the person I was talking to pointed out, the creator of Python is like openly considers it like a dictatorship. Like he's handing down orders on how Python should be done. And well, whereas Matt's the creator of Ruby is more of like a community relaxed, creative style person that, you know, hmm. and, and then you can see it through their language in the, in the culture of the people who adopt the programming languages too, which is just interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, um, I, I've also noticed some, something similar in, in being like, uh, the the front end developer or the back end developer, which yep. I, I think has to a lot to do with personality, uh, or or it becomes uh, like you you will become a certain personality if you have like a back end developer role. But I, I can see some parallels there as well. I think. Dude, thank you so much. Did you have a good time hanging out and talking? Yeah, this is this has been fun. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, very very interesting to have uh, an opportunity to share experiences with uh, other CTOs. So so this is uh, I, I really like the work you do. It's it's uh, very both interesting and, and beneficial. So thank you very much.